What up, everyone? Long time no see. Um, haven't been around in a while for a number of reasons. Had some personal things come up. Got really sick for a while. Was out of town for a while. So last time I posted a video, uh, I was all caught up with boxes. I was right on time for the first time in pretty much forever. And then a lot of things come up, and now I'm way behind again, as per usual. It just seems very easy to get behind on videos. <clears throat> but I wanted to do a weekly roundup and talk about some things, show you some stuff I've got, talk about where I've been, some announcements, uh, things that are going on. So I just wanted to keep you guys up to date, so I thought I'd do one of these to explain a few things. Um, first of all, I, I actually recorded a bunch of videos before I left on my trip to Vegas. That's where I've been the past week. And I just didn't have time to edit them before I left. I got too caught up with things. So uh, after this video is recorded, I'll be posting those videos. So the next couple videos after this, I uh, just know that I recorded them like two weeks ago. So just in case the timelines don't match up, uh, I don't want any, everyone to be super confused. So I thought I'd, I'd talk about that so everyone gets a heads up that those are really old videos. So at the time I recorded them, I was on time with things. But this is like two weeks later. So I just wanted to let everyone know about that. Um, secondly, um, I want to announce a giveaway that I'm doing, um, the winner of that. I want to announce the next giveaway I'm doing because people asked about it. And I have an unboxing from a very special fan. And then, like I said, so I show you some cool stuff just like the normal weekly roundup. Anyway, to start things off, um, where I've been the past week is in Las Vegas. I was there for EVO. So um, anyone who knows anything about competitive gaming knows what EVO is. But a lot of people watching this channel might not. Um, this is where I got this shirt. And basically, EVO is the world championship for competitive gaming. Mostly tournament fighting games, but it's the world championship, and it's a super big deal. And this year, it was pretty huge. And it was in Las Vegas, and I was there for a week, uh, went with my brother, uh, was competing in a few games. Some of you may have noticed that I posted a few videos of gaming videos of me playing with my friends and my brother called Road to EVO, and that's what it is. It's just us practicing for that scene and it was really fun it was cool to see a lot of people that I'm fans of because I'm really into the competitive gaming scene so it's cool to see people that I've been a fan of and watched on tournaments tons of times met some really awesome people met some other really famous youtubers um, met Seth Killian um, for those of you who don't know that he's like one of the main guys creators of Street Fighter and he's one of the main guys at Capcom again gamers will know that name but <clears throat> he's kind of a big deal and if you follow me on Instagram, it's court.thompson. Um, I'll post some pictures from that trip, so if you're curious about that. And I also have a video of me playing in the tournament, so if I can get that file, I'll post that somewhere too. So anyone who's into that gaming thing can check that out, because it is pretty exciting. It's a really big deal to go there, and it was a really fun trip, so that's really awesome. So yeah, so there's that. Next, let's talk about some items. And then I'll do my unboxing, and then I'll talk about uh, giveaways at the very end. So if you want to just know about that, go ahead and skip to the end. But yeah, I want to talk about some stuff. Um, first of all, some unboxings of different things. Uh, a lot of the stuff I have, surprisingly, I've gotten a lot of Ninja Turtle stuff lately. I guess there just is a lot of it because the movie was somewhat recent. So I think there just was a lot of stuff, but wasn't trying to. But a lot of the stuff I've gotten just happens to be Ninja Turtles, and a lot of the things I did have to do with that. Um, first of all, like you see here, I got a little bit of a different setup. I got the Dorbs from Ninja Turtles because GameStop actually had a super huge sale recently. Someone on this channel told me about it, and I got most of them for like $3. I got Ghost Rider for $2. It was $1.97. Brand new. So I, I had gotten two of them from the TMNT box, so for 3 and $4, I'm like, well, I'm going to complete the collection because I like them. I like Dorbs. I think they're cool. So now I got the whole complete set here, and I really like those, that's really cool. <clears throat> you also notice below here, I got the Loyal Subjects, their Wave 2 that um, just came out. Over here I've had Wave 1 for a long time, and Wave 2 just came out, and I really like them. I'm a huge fan of the Loyal Subjects, the guy that designs them, Joe Allard, I met him at Comic Con last year, super nice guy. I'm hoping to go again this year and talk to him, but I don't think I'll be going to Comic Con unfortunately. Uh, I don't think I have the time or the money or the resources, and I don't even have a ticket, So, and I haven't talked to anyone about it, but, you know, whatever. Um, anyway, I've always been a fan of the Loyal Subjects. Their Ninja Turtles line was really amazing. They did a fantastic job, and they also have a Dragon Ball Z line coming out, which I'm a huge fan of, so I'm excited to see that. So I want to talk about these a little bit and talk about the box layout 
um, to help you guys out if you're trying to find specific figures. First of all, the original Loyal Subjects series, pretty hard to collect actually because the Loyal Subjects figures are the most expensive ones pretty much in existence. Most blind boxes are pretty cheap, like Mystery Minis are five and six bucks, like across the board and kid robots get pretty expensive 10 to 12 but the loyal subjects are at the cheapest like 12.99 for a blind box and they have figures like the foot soldier from series one that are one of 96 so if you do the math like 96 times 12.99 like it should cost over a thousand dollars to get some of these if you were getting them one at a time so they're crazy expensive but it's really hard to get the whole series and then they had the comic-con exclusive ones which i went and picked up and they kind of milked that first series for a long time. And I've gotten pretty much all of them. Then they had a GameStop series and they had exclusives. The only ones I didn't get were the final series they did, which was the Metallic series. And I just, they seemed like they were doing too much with that first design. And the Metallic ones weren't different enough. And it was just like, okay, I, I'm going to pass on that. I wanted to get the whole series one, but it, there was just too much of it. Anyway, series two came out. And there was already one of 96 figures, one of 48, and one of 24. And it's a huge pain in the ass to try and collect those because, like I said, it's very expensive. But as you'll see, right here, if you can see it, got Splinter, one of 96. Yes! So I was really excited to get that, and I think I figured out um, the best way to find those figures. Now, I've talked about before, when I talked about my mystery minis of the science fiction series, that there is an algorithm to how they put these things in the box. And a lot of people said I'm an idiot, it's just a box layout. And it's like, well, for Funko stuff, a lot of times it is. Because their series are just one, there's one of each figure in a box, it's one of 12. And for that, there's no real algorithm because the equation would be N equals N. There's no real math involved in it, it's just a layout of where they are. But, um, for when you get to series like this, where the rarity of the figure is higher than the box number, then, then there is math involved, then there is an algorithm involved in that, and that's what I was trying to talk about before. And it's not always that easy to figure out. So I think these companies are kind of getting um, keen to that, because when they first started out, they were always in the same spots, and the rare one would always be in the same exact spot. So you could easily figure out, without having to do any math, with just Googling it and looking at a box layout, where the figure you wanted was going to be. Now, I think they're kind of getting, um, like I said, they're getting um, keen to that because I've noticed they're switching it up. I've noticed that more recently these box companies are not putting things in the same spot because they don't want people just getting the rare ones and trying to resell them online because that's no fun. So, what I've noticed in the Loyal Subjects one, um, they have, their crates are 24, so it's 4 by 6, I believe, 24 um, little blind boxes in their case. Now, um, something, I, I noticed the figures weren't always in the same spot, but if you're looking for the rare ones, it's not too hard to figure out. And basically, the easiest way for them to do it um, when they're part of the assembly line is to put them in the corners. And, but what I have noticed is that they're not always in the same corner. Now, if you're looking down at the box, um, I've noticed the bottom right figure is usually where Shredder's going to be. He's one of 24, and I actually picked him up the other day because I was kind of trying to figure it out, and there was, um, I actually found out there was two Shredders in one box, which didn't make any sense because he's one of 48, but anyway, the bottom right seemed to be Shredder, and the top left seemed to be where Splinter was, if there is a Splinter in that box, and the Leatherhead, which is the one of 24, was in a random spot, so I don't know if it's consistent enough to say it's going to be in this place, so like I said, I think they're trying to make it so not every box is the same so you can't always find every figure because I actually have watched some other unboxings of it and things were in different place oddly enough but for the rare ones I think they're always going to be in the corners and what I've noticed it's either the bottom right or the top left so I can't guarantee anything but from all the unboxings that I've watched and me personally digging through boxes that's what I've noticed to be the most consistent so if you're really trying to get those rare figures those are going to be your best bets for trying to get them, but that's about as good as you're going to be able to do because I think they are trying to switch it up, but it's still too hard for them to put rare ones in the middle, so they're just switching out the corners. Um, so yeah, the, that's the only, that's, sorry I can't help out more, but I hope that helps out at least a little bit. So if you're trying to just buy them one at a time, because normally what I would do is just buy a whole case of them 
and show you guys myself. But when these things are $12.99 a piece for 24 of them, it's really expensive. And it was just out of my price range to get a whole box, or else I would have. With the first series, I actually got two boxes because they had a sale going on. But um, yeah, it was just too expensive. So I'm trying to do the best I can without spending a small fortune. Because I've gone online to look for Splinter, and he's selling for over $100, which is fucking crazy. That's so much to pay for that. So I hope that helps you in your hunting. But um, other than that, as far as this series is concerned, and just a review on them, I really like this series. I really, Again, I love the Loyal Subjects. They have such a high attention to detail. And I was, um, I was upset at first because I thought they were using the same sculpt for the turtles. But when I got them, I noticed they actually do have a different sculpt, which is really cool. Because although they look very similar, Series 1 Turtles versus Series 2, they actually did go through the trouble to make them different sculpts. So the heads are sculpted different, the weapons are sculpted different and painted different. So I like that they did that. They didn't just copy it over and make a cheap... Uh, cheap series too. They actually did re-sculpt them. As far as the bodies are concerned, I'm not sure. I haven't looked close enough to see if those are different. They do look different, but if those are the same, not that big a deal. But they, they do make everything uh, different for the most part. And the weapons are totally different sculpted. And there's such a high attention to detail and they're poseable. Like, they really do a fantastic job. And I think they're such an amazing series. And so far, I've gotten all of them I need um, and I'm going to go online just to buy the common ones. I got all the rare ones. I got really lucky and found out where they were going to be, and I got pretty lucky with that. So that's good news. So yeah, that's the Loyal Subjects. And my mouth is getting dry because it's hot as hell out here. It's super dry. Um, so yeah, more things that I got. So this is something really cool that I got. Also Ninja Turtles. And this is a figure of the first Ninja Turtle. So, if anyone's a huge Ninja Turtles fan, you've seen this before. And you've seen, this is the original drawing. So this is the very first Ninja Turtle drawn by Kevin Eastman, the very first one ever. And this is where the creation of the Turtles happened. And this original drawing went up, went for auction. They were trying to sell it for like three million. I don't think it did sell, but it's very rare, um, the original one. And so they decided to make a figure based on that. And there was a, this is the deluxe version, and it comes with this art print. So I'll take this figure out and show you this really quick. I saw this a long time ago, and it wasn't that expensive, but it sold out right away, and I couldn't get it. So I had to buy it from someone else on eBay, and I paid a lot more for it. But I, I honestly think it was worth it, so I think it's really cool. If I can get it out. Come on. Do do. Alright, so still in the package, and it has three different heads, and it's the original turtle was of Michelangelo, because he has nunchucks, so it has a red mask and an orange mask. So yeah, it's just this black and white figure of the first turtle, and I thought that was really cool, and I, I thought that first drawing was cool, and I got the, the deluxe version came with this art print of the first drawing, and you'll notice something special on the bottom. It's actually signed by Kevin Eastman. So, funny story... Um, I actually have been hanging out with Kevin Eastman a lot lately. And for those of you, again, if anyone doesn't know, Kevin Eastman is the co-creator of Ninja Turtles. Eastman and Laird created them back in 1984. Um, and Kevin still draws for Ninja Turtles to this day. He actually had a cameo in the uh, most recent Ninja Turtles movie. He was in that. But I actually met him a few years ago at Comic-Con and bought some original artwork off him. I'm pretty sure I've shown that on the channel at some point. Anyway, he since then has moved to San Diego, which where I'm from, and those videos I posted playing Smash Brothers, uh, it's at my friend's house, and his house, we just recently found this out, is right down the street from IDW, the actual publishing company where they make the artwork, the Ninja Turtles comic, IDW is like a few blocks away from his house. And I also found out that Kevin Eastman works there, he has an office there. And if I can find the picture, I'll post it right now, but I have a picture of his office where he actually works. And he constantly is doing signings and stuff like that. And there's events and parties going on all there. So I've just been showing up to all of them. 
and I bring something along every time, like comic books and stuff like that, and he signs them and he draws pictures. I got a bunch of original artwork from him, I got sketches from him, so I'm kind of there all the time. He's a super nice guy, he's, he's really amazing, so it's cool. It's like a dream come true, I've always been a fan of his, but he's like right there and we go and like hang out with him and have him sign stuff and talk to him, so it's really amazing. So. I've got him to sign a shitload of stuff, but I thought it'd be fitting to have him sign that original Ninja Turtles one. So that's been really cool. And again, if you follow me on Instagram, I have pictures of him on there and of his studio. Again, I'll, I'll put my the link, if I remember, in the description so you can follow me on Instagram and see pictures of that as well. So that's been really cool. So, to do, so that's that. Also, speaking of the loyal subjects in Ninja Turtles, I actually picked up this the um, seven inch Leonardo the battle damaged one and you know oddly enough these have been going really cheap these were at comic-con and one of them was supposed to be a comic-con exclusive but I don't know what it is about the loyal subjects I think they make a lot of their comic-con exclusives because up until just recently you could still buy them from last year's comic-con I got this one for like twenty seven dollars and it's still on their website for sixty dollars so you can find these really cheap online surprisingly um, which is cool, but sucks because I paid 60 for the first one I got. But uh, oddly enough, they're, they're selling for quite cheap, which I, I don't fully understand. But, you know, whatever. And so, yeah, there's that. Also, something else, Ninja Turtles, uh, a series that I got. These are actually Mega Blocks. And I'll give a close up of these. So there's Raph, and there's Donatello. And then I got, like, Leonardo and Michelangelo. So I got all four turtles, and they come with their own thing and they come with a little display on the back and then I got bigger sets for Bebop and Rocksteady so there's that there he is in there there's the whole play set and you'll see on the back here they all connect together so you can combine them and make one big scene but I really like these I saw these recently at Toys R Us and I'm usually not a fan of this style of figures but these are really cool and they have like a surprising amount of detail if you can see um, for such small figures. I thought they were really cool though, the classic 90's figures. Now you'll look at these and think like these are very similar to like Legos or Mini Mates and they, they kinda are but kinda not um, in the sense that they have that basic structure. I've honestly never been a fan of Legos like the Lego figures, like the human figures because they all look so similar and kind of the same with Mini Mates. They have that like circular head like Legos do and they all look too similar and kind of how Funko Pops used to be, they all look almost exactly the same. But Mega Blocks, I'm actually a big fan of, I'm kind of getting into because they have like well sculpted heads and bodies and um, some of the limbs look very similar but they still look like really nice action figures and I like things that are really small and it comes with a cool little set. So I've actually been collecting some um, Mega Blocks lately uh, from all the different series. They have the 90s ones, they have the Nickelodeon series and the new movie series. So I'm a big fan of these even though I've never been a fan of Legos or Mini Mates. Mega Blocks, I gotta say, I, I'm, I'm kind of kind of a fan of now. I think they do a really good job. So I just saw that series and they really weren't expensive. For each one, I think it was seven dollars for the figure and the playset and the bigger one was like twelve. So that wasn't that hard to come by and Toys R Us has had some really good stuff. I hadn't been in there in such a long time, but I got some other stuff which I'll show off another time. Um, so yeah, I wanted to keep this kind of short. I know it's long already, but that's the stuff I found, so let's get into some other business. Mouth is so dry. Next, let's do my little unboxing, and then we'll talk about some giveaway stuff. So, um, this is from a very uh, special fan of mine. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Maria Martinez Castillero. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I'm pretty sure it's a Spanish name. I could be butchering that. I don't know. Anyway, um, I talked about the science fiction mystery minis and how I was looking for that really rare um, Hot Topic Gold Bender exclusive and other figures I was looking for. And she was such a fan of the channel. She's like, oh, I actually have those. I'd be happy to send them. And she actually did. I, I kind of didn't believe it at first because it's so hard to find these, it's freaking impossible. But she did, and she sent me the exclusive Hot Topic 1 of 72 Gold Bender. So this has been incredibly hard to find. I've been looking for it for 
months now, almost a year since this series has come out. I've been looking for it ever since, online, everywhere. And I actually have a save search on my phone to this day to look for this figure specifically. Because he shows up every once in a while, but he literally sells for like $80 and up online. And it's so crazy. And it's not the, like, I just couldn't bring myself to pay $80 for one little figure. That's just was too much for me. And uh, so I'm so happy to get this. And this is the last figure I needed of that series. So my series is finally complete. And I'm honestly so excited. Like, that's such a relief to get that. So thank you so much. You are, I, like, you're my best friend. Like, I, if there's anything I can ever do for you, then please let me know. Also, she sent me one other figure I was really looking for. Um, down here, can't really see anymore, I have the evolution of Eevee, these figures that a lot of people have asked about that I've shown off before. Let me open this up. And there was one more I needed, which was Espeon. And these are really expensive too. These go for like 20, 30 bucks a piece. And they're, again, really hard to find. So she found it for me and sent it on over. And that was so nice of her because, again, I've searched so long and so hard for these. So let me show this off. Mm. Love the smell of new plastic. So yeah. So it comes with this little base. And here's the little figure right here. So these are just really cool figures, and I have all the evolutions, Eevee and Flareon and Jolteon and all of them. So I got all of them, and this is the last one I needed. So that's really cool. Another set completed thanks to the help of a good friend. So I really appreciate that. So on top of that, she sent me some other cool stuff. So she sent me some snacks, all kinds, oh, Pup's getting excited, all kinds of food from, um, she's, the, she's put in a little piece of paper here. Oh, damn it. I don't know where I put it. Hold on, stand by. Let me go find that paper. I had the description of everything in there. Hold up. Alright, sorry about that. I had to get this little piece of paper. This describes all the stuff in here. But anyway, she sent me a bunch of snacks, and these are from Denmark and Scandinavia. So I thought <clears throat> that was really nice. So she sent me just a bunch of cool stuff here. So I'll show off some of these snacks. And Pup's really excited too. So first, these are called Torenzos, and from the description, these are like, I guess the closest thing is like pork rinds, but they're like pieces of pork that are potato chips. Now, here's the thing. I do want to try all these things out, but I decided not to do them on camera because like I always do with Munch Pack, I open up the items and I try a bite of it just to see what's up, but then once the package is open, um, I can't really save it, and I'm not going to eat the whole box of stuff, and I actually want to enjoy this stuff this time, so I'm not going to try out every piece on here on camera. I do want to save these and try them out, so this box I'm not going to try on camera, uh, all, like Munchpack, but I do really want to try these, and I want to actually enjoy the whole thing, so I want to make myself sick by tasting everything at once. So I'll just go through them. So we got those pork things, and then this, this says Tijuana. So these kind of just look like sunflower seeds. That looks like what it is. Let me see if there's a description on here. So yeah, it's a, yep, sunflower seeds with a kind of barbecue taste. There are many different types, and I chose this one because I particularly like. Good, good choice. And then it says the description for the other one, salted fried pork. So she gave me this little card, and she typed that little description, which was so nice of her. I really appreciate that too. What do we got here? These are called Galley Jessen. I don't know if the camera's focusing. Can't reach because I got a puppy on my lap. And this looks like some candy? Yeah, let's see what it says here. Oh, very thin chocolate bar. Uh, they eat with bread as a sandwich. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it actually does say on the back. It's a piece of chocolate that you put on bread. To make a chocolate sandwich. Interesting. Never tried that before. That sounds cool. Alright, got a bag of these. JSO. Just some little candies in a bag. Let's see what it says about JSO. I don't see the JSO on here. Yeah, I don't see them. Interesting. Okay, well, I'll have to try those out and see what they are. Looks, looks kind of like a caramel or a toffee or something like that. All right, cool. 
All right, let's see what else we got in here. Looks like some more candies. They say gajol. Sorry, it's not focusing. I can't reach the camera because of this puppy. They say salty licorice candy. So many types of licorice. Okay, cool. I hope it's not black licorice because I think black licorice is literally the worst taste in the world. Regular licorice is good. All the other licorice except black licorice. I don't know anyone who likes black licorice. Gross. And this says Super Flyers. And this is the licorice stick filled with sugar and salmiac filled, which I do not know what that is. Sorry, you're going to have to find out. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm so curious to try these, but oh man, it looks like black licorice. Gross. So I'll have to try those out later because I don't want to try all these and vomit up colorful licorice. All right. Next we got something called Kick. Kick candy. This is Swedish licorice toffee candy. All right, cool. Word. And it looks like some of the last ones in here. What are these called? Anton Berg nougat. And these, stop up. Oh, here we go. Three different kinds of marzipan bars. Marzipan is also typical in Denmark. Classic marzipan bar, marzipan bar extra dark with nibs, marzipan bar with nougat. All right, awesome. <clears throat> and there were some things in here which I did not see. Oh, here's the, here's the JSO things, here we go. Uh, they were candy fruit covered in chocolate. This is a very special treat because it's typical from where I am, Aragon. The different flavors are apple, pear, peach, orange, and cherry. And also she showed a picture of the choop, Chupa Chups, which are lollipops, which I didn't see in there, but it may have just fallen out somewhere. But anyway, those are all the stuff here. Um, and she put a little uh, description of a lot of the stuff and why she put them in there, which was so amazing of her. So thank you, Maria. I really appreciate that. And you are amazing. And I'm so happy that I got these figures. Like, I can't thank you enough because I've searched forever for them. They were so, so difficult to find. So it is such a relief to get those. And thank you so much. Um, so now I want to talk about the giveaway. And oddly enough, it has to do with Maria specifically. So I want to do my 75... Why are you biting me? What is happening? Kiss me. Thank you. Stop biting me. So I want to do my 7,500 subscriber giveaway. And for those of you who don't know, my giveaways are all the... Why are you being like this? What? Why are you being cranky? You gonna bite me? You gonna bite? Oh, you got tired? Okay, thank you. So my giveaways are always the same, and that if you ever want to be a part of my giveaway, then all you gotta do is share this channel. Um, share a video, share a link to my channel, um, anything, post it anywhere, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, anything like that, and send me the link. So the same with the giveaway I did for Daredevil, same thing. If you ever want to be a part of a giveaway, send me some links of anything you post, and you'll automatically be entered to whatever giveaway is going on at the time. So the next giveaway, uh, hopefully will be 8,000 uh, subscribers. Hopefully I'll have time, but it may be later than that, so I always keep down your names. But for my 7,500 um, mm -hmm. subscriber giveaway, stop. Um, honestly, it's gonna be it's gonna be Maria. It's uh, and it's not because she sent me a box. That has nothing to do with it. But I want to say something about her. How helpful she's. Will you stop? Hey, stop. Stop it. Stop. She has been so. <laughs> will you get out of here? Go away. Are you done? Okay. Maria has been so helpful to this channel. Um, the fact that she sent a box honestly has nothing to do with uh, her winning the giveaway. She has been on it all the time. She sends me messages almost every day of her sharing my videos, sharing the channel. She has been so helpful in every single way. The fact that she sent me a box just goes to show what a nice person it is she is and how helpful she is. So I just want to uh, point out the fact that her sending a box has nothing to do with winning the giveaway. That makes no difference whatsoever. She still would have won had she not sent this, and I decided long before she sent you that. She's just always been helpful. She's always posting. She's always been in contact with me, and she's been such a great help. So um, I don't know if she even wants anything, to be quite honest, because I haven't told her yet. But <clears throat> Maria, if you're watching them, anything you want, honestly. If you've seen anything on my channel, um, or if you want a box like you sent me with some cool American food, American candies, or collectibles, 
anything at all you want, honestly, just name it and you can have it. You've been so helpful to me, and I want to send you a box anyway for everything you sent me, so please name anything you like, and I will make it happen. You honestly deserve it, and I'm so happy that I have people like that on my channel. I have people that I honestly consider my friends that I talk to. I, I'm so thankful for that, and that's why I do this. That's why I do the channel, because I love the community, and I love hanging out and talking to you guys, so... I would like to do anything within my power that I can do for you, and I will make that happen. <clears throat> so, for the future giveaway, like I was saying, just post this video, you can post another video, just post a link to my channel, anything you want, just share it in some way, write a little description about it, and just have a link, um, talk about something, anything you want, just as long as it's on a positive note, just whatever you want, and then send me a private message with a link to whatever you sent, and for every time you send one, I'll put your name down, and then you'll be entered in the giveaway. For each link that you send, I'll put your name in the hat one time, and then we'll do kind of a raffle type situation. So, it's totally up to you. No one ever feel any pressure to do anything, just if you like to. So, and again, you don't have to send me anything to win a giveaway. This was just an isolated incident, but I just wanted to say how much, thank you so much, Maria, for everything you've done. Thank you for this box, and yeah. That's been pretty much it for this weekly roundup. I, I just wanted to go through those things, and I know this has been terribly long. I talk way too much, so I apologize for that. But I hope this helps you if you're trying to get loyal subject stuff, and I'll have more box layouts in the future. Uh, I hope you saw some things that you may like here, or maybe you can go purchase yourself. Hope you do the giveaway. Um, hope you like the Evo stuff. Again, follow me on Instagram or anything like that, or hit me up in the comments. Let's talk it out. So. Let's start something going. I'm always happy to reply or help anyone out who's in need. Other than that, um, I'll be continuing with the boxes of June, I think. Jesus. So I'm way behind and I got boxes on that. But um, I'm going to try and do them as quickly as I can and try and catch up with July and stuff like that. Anyway, this has been a weekly roundup. I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate everyone that supports and helps the channel. Thank you guys so much. See you on the next video. Love you all. Peace.